San Francisco's tech boom has brought with it skyrocketing real estate and a surge of new construction. But there is a chance it could all come crashing down. Here's why the city may not be as prepared as you may think when the next big earthquake hits. The clock's ticking and it's been ticking for a while now and it's probably time to, to get ready. There's so much more we need to do to be prepared for this risk because it's enormous and it's going to happen again. There's a little over 70% probability that we'll have a magnitude 6.7 earthquake in the next 30 years. But that's an earthquake that can occur on the Hayward Fault, on the San Andreas Fault, on a whole range of faults that underlie the Bay Area. These faults have triggered two major earthquakes in modern history. In 1906, a 7.9 magnitude earthquake hit San Francisco, and 80% of the city's buildings fell or burnt to the ground, leaving 300,000 people homeless and killing nearly 3,000. The Oakland A's take, take, I'll tell you what, we're having a In 1989, a 6.9 magnitude quake caused the ground to liquefy in parts of the city and collapsed highways, killing more than 60 people. Lessons were learned during both big quakes. The 1906 disaster proved the importance of protecting the city's water and gas lines, while the 1989 quake improved the way we build our bridges and highways. Good evening. Once again, the dream of a good life in Southern California has taken a major jolt. But in 1994, when an earthquake hit Los Angeles, the way we think about creating earthquake-resistant buildings changed around the world. Prior to the Northridge earthquake, when people built steel buildings, which was considered to be kind of the gold standard of how to build earthquake-resistant tall building, and it was assumed that the, those welds would never break. But after the Northridge quake, they found that many of the welds actually did break. We've done some simulations since that time, and they show that you're about five times more likely to collapse a building if you have those deficient welds in the building. So it turns out that virtually every building built with steel prior to 1994 has deficient welds in it. And while cities around the world have moved away from using this construction style, a recent report by the U.S. Geological Survey suggested that nearly 40 high-rise buildings in San Francisco were built using this flawed construction technique. Some of these buildings include the iconic Transamerica Pyramid and offices for Pacific Gas and Electric, Google, and even our own CNBC Bureau. Adding to the problem is the fact that many of these buildings are built on landfill, which could cause soil liquefaction during the next big quake. On the good side, those same buildings that have these welds and these systems have very uh, redundant systems. There's lots of columns and beams that are all resisting the loads. So even if one weld were to get in trouble and fracture, for example, it doesn't mean that necessarily the building will collapse. We haven't seen a tall building collapse in an earthquake, except in very rare instances. But we shouldn't fool ourselves into thinking that this is so unlikely we don't have to think about it. But the chance of a quake hasn't stopped developers from building up. More than 5 million square feet of office space is expected to be completed in 2018 alone, including the tallest office building west of the Mississippi, the Salesforce Tower. The Salesforce Tower and several of the other tall buildings in San Francisco that have been designed and constructed recently have been designed to withstand the maximum earthquake that the San Andreas Fault can produce, which in round terms is about an 8.0 earthquake. Tall buildings are very flexible and tend to have very long periods of vibration, very long sway. If when the ground shakes, it takes a long time for the building to wake up, so to speak, to even respond to that earthquake. So most experts agree that skyscrapers are not the biggest concern for San Francisco during the next big one. It's actually buildings like these, people's homes, that are a bigger problem. The primary concern in San Francisco, I'd say, is something that in engineering terms we call a soft story. And when you look around San Francisco, what that means is there's thousands, actually maybe tens of thousands of buildings, where there's three or four levels of apartments over a one-story parking garage. 
and where that parking garage is, where the garage door is, there's really no way to resist the ground shaking. In 2014, the city made it mandatory to retrofit certain soft story structures, but there are hundreds of buildings that still need to comply with the rule. And if we shouldn't lose sight of the real critical issues that really need to be addressed, for example, uh, the water supply. In San Francisco, after the Loma Prieta earthquake, we saw the Marina District not only have structural problems, but a, a massive fire broke out. Uh, and it's difficult to put out fires if there's no water. The median price of a home in San Francisco is now a whopping $1.6 million. And because of the high price of earthquake insurance, only one in 10 Californians are covered. And so the losses associated with the next big one would be catastrophic. Without insurance, the victim's on their own. We tend to think that maybe the government will come in and bail us all out, or there might be a tendency to think that people are gonna get their homes rebuilt by some sort of government program. That doesn't happen. Only about 10% of the homes uh, have earthquake insurance. That's something that we're working really hard to address because the scientists tell us we're going to get hit again. That's a certainty. What is also certain is that we're not adequately financially prepared. The USGS estimates that a massive rupture on the Hayward Fault could result in $82 billion of damage to the Bay Area, and hundreds of lives would be lost. And what if the San Andreas Fault slips? A 7.8 magnitude earthquake would produce about $300 billion in damage. We need to do more to be ready for an event of that size because the scientists say it could happen.